Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, I'll review eight different tests that you can run on control charts in Minitab that are used for finding special cause variation. By now, you should have reviewed all the lessons that lead up to this discussion, including special cause variation and statistical process control. For now, let's begin by reviewing again the impact that variation can have on a process. As a quick review of what we went over in a previous lesson, we said that not all variation is necessarily bad, but as long as it's controlled and understood, then it might consider to be good variation. And we'll look at some of that again right here as a quick review. How can we tell the difference between good variation and bad variation? Well, the variation, again, is within the customer's requirements. We consider that to be good. And that's generally going to be common cause variation, and it should not include any special cause variation. Also, any variation that occurs outside of the customer's requirements or that voice of the customer is what we consider to be bad or unacceptable. Now, this could include some common cause variation, but most often it's going to at least include the special cause variation. The illustration we had used last time is here where we have this normal distribution spread across a plane here, and we have a customer's um, requirements or the voice of the customer. The VOC is defined here by where the lower spec limit is, LSL, and by where the upper spec limit is, the USL. So any kind of process or any part of the process that falls within the voice of the customer, within this range of the lower and upper spec limit, we said that's acceptable variation. That's willing, we're saying that's good variation. This tends to be more common cause variation. But the actual performance might actually be reflected by what falls well outside of those customer requirements. And that would be reflecting here the voice of the process, or VOP. And anything, any distance between our performance that falls outside of what the customer requires and where the actual performance is, these are the defects. These are the things we're trying to find and eliminate within our process. So we said before that special cause variation is always going to be bad. Common cause variation is is going to be only bad when it falls outside of the voice of the customer. But when it falls within this range of the voice of the customer, then that common cause variation is considered to be good or acceptable. We also said that control charts are going to be a primary tool for how we're going to measure and find the potentially bad variation that we're looking for in our process. Now let's look at a control chart and talk about its different components. Well, how do you read a control chart? We'll go over some of those elements right now. And that is, control charts tend to plot the data points. It's for continuous data over time. They're going to define some of these primary components that we're going to see within a control chart. First of all, the observations. These are each of the data points from the data set. They're going to be pre-sorted, and they must follow in a date-time order. They have to read from left to right or, or top to bottom in that sorted in that date-time order in order to be plotted correctly within the control chart. Also, it's going to reflect for us the mean. That's the average for all the data points as well as the lower control limit and the upper control limit. And these limits are a little bit different than the spec limits, but the lower control limit reflects three standard deviations below the mean. Upper control limit is three standard deviations above the mean. Also, there are going to be special cause tests that are going to be run in control charts. Now, in Minitab, we typically have eight basic rules or eight basic tests that are going to be highlighted within the data that we can use to test the data to find certain special causes. We don't have to use them all, but we'll review all these within this lesson a little bit later. But first, First, let's look at an example of a control chart and go over these different components. First of all, here's what a control chart might look like, again, as an output from Minitab. And here's the region in the middle within the red lines of the where we might see some common cause variation. So within these red lines, this reflects what the area that's within control, again, within three standard deviations of the mean. And this would be the expected variation region. And we also have the unexpected variation region. This is reflected in red here, highlighted in red. These are the areas that might be special cause or things that fall outside of, of our, our area that we consider to be the expected variation region. Other elements include the mean that's notified right here, and it's highlighted in green in the control chart, as well as we've got the upper control limit, again, three standard deviations above the mean, as well as the lower control limit that's three standard deviations below the mean. Then we have, in this example, 20 different observations or 20 different data points. Again, they're all sorted in date, time, order, and that's why they can be reflected in here from left to right within that time frame. And then finally, we have some example of a data point that falls outside of this region of the expected variation region. It falls within the unexpected variation region. And Minitab in this example will highlight that data point in red in order to call it out. And it's basically telling us that observation number seven had failed the test for the data points because it's falling, in this case, outside of that region and falling below or lower control limit. 
So the control limits are not the same thing as what we talked previously about, and that's the spec limits, like the LSL or USL. The spec limits are what's tied to the voice of the customer. They'd help define what the customer requires or what their expectations are. But in this case, control limits are, are very different because they're based off of three standard deviations from the mean. You can have a process that could be considered within control, within these three standard deviations of the mean, but they do not meet the customer's requirements. And you can also have vice versa. So it's important to understand we're not saying the same thing when we talk about control limits compared to spec limits. Now, before we dive into the eight different tests, let's begin by exploring the different zones that are on a control chart and how that will help us understand how the eight different tests work. So how do you detect special cause variation within a control chart? Well, special cause variation could exist in a process that appears to be in control. That is, it's falling within the lower control limit and the upper control limit. And it also may be reflected in trends or behavior that appear non-normal. So it's not always going to be something like in the previous example where it falls outside of the control. It could be some other types of behaviors that we're going to look for that could be an example of special cause variation. Now we have eight different tests or general rules that at least we have embedded within Minitad that we'll show. And there's rules that are used for finding potential special cause variation. So some of these tests are divided into a control region of the chart where it breaks those into three different zones. And each zone is about one standard deviation apart from each other. So here's an illustration of what we'll look like. And this will help us in setting the, the groundwork for how we're going to interpret some of these different tests. Before we dive into that, let's look at this. So again, we have these regions here where this middle line Line, middle dotted line would reflect the mean. Then we have the upper dotted line which reflects the upper control limit and the lower one that reflects the lower control limit. Again, these are defined as three standard deviations from the mean. So if we go back to the mean again in here, we would say that within one standard deviation of the mean, this is what we're calling zone C, whether that falls one standard deviation above or one standard deviation below. And then zone B would be the region that falls two standard deviations above or below the mean. And zone A will reflect the area that is three standard deviations above or below the mean. And then anything that's outside of control, these are things that are greater than three standard deviations, either above or below the mean as well. So as we set the groundwork again for, for laying, for describing these eight different tests we'll go over, it's important to understand what these different zones mean and how we're breaking it out uh, based off of the number of standard deviations, each of them are from the mean. Okay, now let's talk about all eight of those tests for special cause variation. Now, as I describe these eight different tests for special cause variation, I do want to preface by saying that these aren't hard and fast rules for finding special cause variation. We find that these are the types of tests that could indicate where there is some special cause variation, but it's not a guarantee that it's special cause variation. So if we see some of these tests applied and it happens to trigger some error or something within the control chart, there's a good idea or a good sense that it could be a special cause variation, but it's not a guarantee that it is. So just be careful. These aren't intended to be hard and fast rules. They should be guidelines for us, or at least give us some sort of indicators of where we need to explore it a little bit further to validate if this is really a special cause that's occurring here, if something we need to fix, or if it really happens to be some something that's occurring as a common cause variation maybe that we didn't understand previously. So the first example we have is, again, looking at these control charts breaking down in these different zones, we would say there's one data point that falls outside of the control limits. Again, it falls out in that unexpected region. So any data point that triggers outside of the, the any of these zones is going to be something that's an error for triggering that type of test. Second test would be nine data points in a row that are on the same side of the mean. So at any point, if you're measuring your data, especially much more data than what I'm representing here in this example. But if you have any nine data points in a row that happen to all fall on the same side of the mean, either in this example all below or if they happen to be uh, at least nine data points all above, in either case, that seems to be something that, that should not be happening. It's some sort of anomaly that's occurring because we expect for normal behavior in a process that it would fall on both sides of the mean. And if we're not seeing that, it could indicate some sort of special cause occurring. Now the third type of test in here is where we see six data points in a row, at least six data points in a row that are all increasing or decreasing. Now sometimes there are some things that might be a good thing to see some improvement or it might indicate some type of improvement possibly if that's what we're going for. But in this case, that's not the kind of thing we're looking for. We're looking for process variation. And in this case, we're seeing if there's at least six 
points or six observations that are all increasing or all decreasing, something might be happening that's unexpected. We're not seeing the normal bouncing and variation, that the common cause variation that is, that we expect to see in the process. So it could indicate some sort of anomaly of something we need to resolve or look into a little further. A third type of test that we're looking into is where we see 14 data points in a row that are alternating up and down. Now, it's kind of odd when you see it moving up and down like this because from a normal perspective, we'd expect to see sometimes that two data points may be going in the same direction at least at some point across 14 different observations. So if you're seeing 14 data points and you're not seeing uh, anything moving in the same direction for, for within two of those data points, uh, and you're seeing that it's spread across at least 14 of them, then something might be happening. We This is not the type of behavior we'd normally expect when it's a, a common cause type of variation. Uh, the fifth type of test is where we're seeing at least two of three consecutive data points that are on the same side of the mean within the zone A region or beyond outside of the zone A region. So in this case, if we look at just three these three data points, at least two of them are falling within zone A, or this these three data points then again, these two are falling outside of A. And when you're looking at any three data points, if you have at least two of them that are falling within the zone A region like that, then again, it could be indicative of some type of special cause variation that you need to explore a little bit further. The sixth type of test is when there are four, or five, four of five consecutive data points that are on the same side of the mean in zone B or beyond. Again, this is within two standard deviations of the mean or beyond. So like we're showing in the example here, at least four out of these five different observations happen to be occurring within zone B. So as a result, and it could be above or below, again, in this example we're just seeing it above. But either way, that would indicate there's something that's happening here. Maybe it's some special cause variation that we need to explore a little bit further. And for the seventh different test that we're going to be looking at is when there's 15 consecutive data points that are within zone C on either side of the mean. So normally we might think that's a good thing, where we're seeing all that bouncing back and forth all within zone C, that is all within one standard deviation of the mean. Again, this is where it could be a general guideline, but across 15 data points that are consecutive data points, we'd expect to, be, to see something falling within the other zones, like a B or A zone, at some point where we're going at least beyond one standard deviation of the mean. So if we're not seeing that, again, we might think that there's something going on, some sort of special cause that we need to explore a little bit further. But it's not a hard and fast rule as if, or guaranteeing as if there is something going wrong necessarily. The last test that we have to look at is when we see eight consecutive data points outside of zone C on either side of the mean. So zone C again is within uh, one standard deviation of the mean. So it's somewhat of the opposite of the previous test that we looked at. This is where we're not seeing any data points at all fall within one standard deviation of the mean. But they all happen to be within uh, zone B or A or beyond. So when we see something like this again within eight consecutive data points, it could be indicating something is going on because it doesn't seem to be reflecting the normal type of variation we'd expect to see. That is where we'd expect to see something falling uh, within zone C, at least within uh, seeing the, the span of eight different observations. Now let's see how you can set up and even modify those tests from within Minitab. Well, if you have many time, you may be wondering how you can set up for these types of tests. So if you're wondering that, let's explore how you can do that within Minitab when you go in to actually run a control chart. So when you open up the control chart, you'll see in the dialog box an option that says chart options on there. If you see the, the chart options, then press that button and it'll open up another dialog box that shows the different options within there. You select the test tab in there. And by selecting this area, you'll see all these different options in here. And here are the eight different tests that we just reviewed that are available. Now, by default, this first test is always going to be applied for all control charts. You don't have to have it applied, but by default, you're going to see that one checked. And you can uncheck it if you didn't want to use it and want to do something different instead. But here it gives you that option of seeing all eight of those different tests that are going to be run. And you can optionally select which ones you do want to run in your data. Now the K column that's over on the far right is what would allow you to modify and test, tweak those tests if you want to become a little more or less restrictive than the, the general standard that's applied for the test. So if, for example, if you're looking at the, the last test that we showed, which was where we saw eight consecutive data points that were falling outside of zone C on either side of the mean. 
Well, in something like that, the default was showing 8. So if you want to run this, you would check that box and you change it from an 8 to whatever you want to use. If you feel that for your data set, you don't want to look just within 8 consecutive data points, but you want to fall, you want to look and see what falls at least across 12 different data points or 16 data points, then you could just change that number there. So that way it gives you that option of customizing this test to run in any way that you want. So when a test fails, when it actually triggers one of these tests where something occurs, then as we've shown in some, some of the illustrations, that observation where the failure occurred is going to be red, and there's going to be some number that Minitab puts next to it to indicate at least which one had failed or which of the tests, one through eight, is the one that actually failed there. Now Minitab's session window will also display those test failures and will give some sort of reference as far as which observations had failed and triggered those particular tests. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. We'll try to identify at least two different metrics that you use in your organization, again, that are continuous values, and then for each of those, try to do the following. Try to pull the historical data for each of those metrics, and if you can, try to get at least 10 to 20 different observations. The, the more, then the better it will be for running and experimenting some of these tests. 10 might be a little bit too small, but depending on what you have available, try to aim for at least 20 or maybe 30 for running this, but you don't want to get too many at the same time, but probably 20 or 30 observations will be ideal for this kind of small uh, application for these different types of tests. So for each of the metrics, try to run all eight of those different variation tests that we just explored and try to run it in Minitab if you have that available. If you don't have Minitab available, you can apply the same tests on your own if you want and just do it manually by looking it over, but it's going to be a lot easier if you happen to have Minitab and can run it through that. So once you run it, then I'll ask yourself these questions. In which of the eight tests had any or each of the metric failed, if it failed at all? And what is the reason for each of fa those failures that you might have observed? And which failures, if there were any, appear to be common or special cause type of variation? Or which ones do you think can't be explained at all? And what do those failures suggest about potential problems in the measured process itself? And what action should be taken, if you think anything, in order to ensure that those types of failures are going to be prevented? Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.